Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel. In this video, we're talking about this big storm system that's going to bring some major snow all the way from New Mexico into the Northeast. Just how much snow could you see from this system? We're going to answer that in this video. Along with the severe weather down the Gulf Coast states, what are the impacts and the timing that the system could bring? Everything you need to know is going to be in this video. Alright, so let's go ahead and look at the model data we're going to be talking about our winter storm and its impacts as far as snow totals along with our severe threat on Tuesday. So we're going to go for the GFS, look at the Euro, look at the Canadian, also the uh, severe weather threat as well. So everything you need to know uh, will be here. So taking on the GFS right now, we do have this system that's bringing some snow to parts of the Midwest, uh, parts of the Ohio Valley into uh, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, even up into Michigan as well. This system will also bring some rainstorms down in parts of the southeast United States where there's a marginal risk. So as we go throughout time here, we can see that the system will sort of form a low off the Atlantic coast and will bring some snow all the way pretty much from uh, Tennessee all the way up into uh, Maine, and pretty much the entire state of Maine, and it you know, could be covered in snow, pretty much. Uh, but, you, but you can see here that as you go throughout time, a low deepens. Actually, quite quickly here, you can see in uh, just about uh, six hours, it drops seven millibars. It's not a that's not a, uh, a bomb cycle or anything like that, but that's just something that we're noticing. Um, but but you can see as uh, this low continues off towards the east here, uh, it should be out of the uh, should be out of the hair of the northeasterners. Uh, by Monday night into Tuesday morning, and then it'll be pretty much dry for the morning. Unless you're on the uh, shore of the Eastern Great Lakes, you may see some snow uh, during the day on Tuesday. But then here's a big deal system, right? You, you see the system here that develops in the southern United States. This is going to bring some snow from basically New Mexico all the way up into the Great Lakes region and the Northeast. So you can see, as you go throughout time, we have rain and storms down here in, in southeast Texas, in the central and southeast Texas, some snow up to the north of it. Actually, quite a bit of snow. -y. There is some heavy snow potential. We'll talk about totals here in just a bit. You can see as you go throughout Tuesday, this low will develop here in, in, and uh, down the warm center here and along the Gulf Coast, there's a slight risk of severe storms out here, and you can see that on your uh, screen right here. Uh, so basically, uh, potentially uh, some heavy snow, isolated heavy snow from uh, North Texas all the way up into the Ohio River region. And you can see this will uh, move off towards the Northeast here and should be predominantly out of the hair of uh, pe people who are from the South Central United States. By uh, Wednesday morning, the out will quickly move off towards the Northeast here for the Great Lakes and the Northeast on Friday night, uh, sorry, Wednesday night in into Thursday morning and then moving out by Friday morning. We have another Cooper system that may develop here in North Central United States and Southern Canada. That will move off towards the southeast here. And then that will impact parts of the Great Lakes, you know, bring some additional light snow to what's already on the ground. Uh, not expecting any major uh, troubles with this system, just some additional snow. And uh, that's pretty much about it. Maybe some gusty winds uh, closer, closer you get to the low, the pressure gradient winds. And then uh, GFS is sort of depicting another system that tries to develop here. Uh, later next week in the 29th here that may, may, may bring some snow to the Great Lakes region, but that one appears to kind of be uh, not a huge, huge deal as far as the GFS goes. Maybe some rainstorms down here in parts of the Gulf Coast states. Not looking like a big deal as far as the view weather on, uh, on this as instability is quite limited. Along with uh, the fact that we don't really have a ton of uh, shear support, so it, it's kind of not really going to be a big severe weather deal as, as well. I'm seeing off the uh, GFS here for this system, but then that move off uh, towards the east, bring some additional snow here. So that's pretty much what we're watching. Our big system is going to be the one that's coming this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then now that will move off. We have some additional stuff, parts of Great Lakes states, and then that will pretty much just be sort of a, a pattern for a little bit of time, just, you know, some. Uh, train of snow for at least the next uh, several days here is what we can see according to GFS here. So I'll take a look at the Euro and then we'll look at snow tolls and you can see here, here's the Euro, a very similar track to GFS here. Not too much different. In fact, very similar look actually across the board, across the GFS and the Euro. So uh, we, you know, of course there are going to be some minor differences between the two models, but we know the overall track is, is relatively, relatively uh, consistent as far as agreements. So uh, there's definitely some agreement amongst the uh, GFS and the, the two major models, of course the Canadian here, 
Uh, not, uh, not too far off. Kayan's also agreeing quite well, so there, there is some, some agreement across the board here, as we're sort of within that five-day range, but uh, we, we still want to, you know, monitor any changes that may happen. I'm seeing the GFS kind of slowly, gradually trend to northwest on the more recent runs as far as the low pressure center as it goes. Uh, when uh, uh, Tuesday evening is where, uh, is where we're looking at that, so... So some things to change here, but I don't think we're going to see these big major shifts in the low pressure uh, center tracks and where the snow could track. Unless you're on the very border of snow, uh, you know, it's probably not going to be a major, major change. So, uh, of course, we'll keep uh, watching and see uh, and see what happens. So let's go to look at snow tolls because I know you guys are wondering how much snow you could receive from this system. Now, I will mention this. There are a ton, and I mean a ton of uncertainties with this. This has been a very difficult forecast as far as the track. You see the track is remaining relatively consistent, and that is, that's helping us out. But as far as amounts, agreement is very much up in the air right now. So... Uh, especially in the South Central region, agreement is so difficult. So let's let's take a look at something here. Okay, want to note this. So we're looking at a GFS here. This is the, the deterministic output. Now you're going to notice here in Northern Arkansas and the Ozarks region, it's showing up to 19 inches of snow. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think you're going to end up with almost 20 inches of snow in Northern Arkansas. Uh, could I be wrong? You know, I don't think so because there is not a lot of support to really push that and global models are even overplaying the snow in new england today and tomorrow so that's why i'm kind of just saying i think there's a little bit too much overplaying as far as snow amounts and all that that what we're seeing on the uh the gfs here I do think there may be a possibility I'm seeing quite a bit of agreement on maybe around the Red River region in Northwest Texas. There could be some heavier snow, isolated areas that could exceed four inches, maybe touching six at most. That's, you know, 90th percentile you know, type stuff right there. Even on the WPC here, uh, the, the, uh, 90th percentile doesn't really show that. But I think there is still that chance of potentially seeing some heavier snowfall totals in some areas. Uh, so just be mindful of that here's the uh, you know above expected the sort of boom that the, that the WPC has out and it, it's showing that that boom a area being in northern Arkansas and southern Missouri up towards about eight to ten inches so uh, who knows it, it's it's tough to say uh, just how much snow a lot of areas could receive I do think though that the NDFD here is being a little bit underdone, especially in Norman's uh, CWA. That would be central Western Oklahoma along with Northwest Texas. I think it's being a little bit underdone. Uh, and, you know, of course, this could change here in the uh, coming runs. So we'll keep a watch on it. I don't think it's going to end up just being a trace. I think it's going to be a little bit, just a little bit more than that. Uh, considering what a lot of models are putting out here. And, of course, I don't really... Um, by the NAM solution, and what I mean by that is practically uh, this. <laughs> I don't, think, I don't think I'm going to see anything like this. Uh, I, I, I think the overall track is, is pretty, is pretty good, but as far as amounts, I think that is a little bit too much. So it just goes to show how difficult this forecast is. Uh, and, I, and I do encourage to go off the the weather service. I think some areas like Norman. Uh, in, in Central and Western Oklahoma, Northwest Texas being a little bit conservative, but at least right now. But for official forecasts, I do encourage the weather service, go to weather.gov, click your county area or just your general area, and it'll give you a link or it'll uh, redirect you to the local National Weather Service for your area, and then, and then you can get forecasts from them. That's where I encourage you guys to get forecasts. We don't do any of our own forecasting here. Uh, we don't make our, make our own snow maps. I know it's fun to do and all that, but we, we don't push any of that. We just, because we want to limit confusion, basically, uh, as much as we possibly can. So that's why I just encourage for preparation info, look at National Weather Service. It is good to look at models, you know, it, it gives you an idea, but models are not to live or die for. Uh, they are not perfect by any means, especially in this situation. 
where there's so much uncertainty. So enough of my rambling about that. Uh, let's go and look at the severe weather uh, potential here. And, and, and of course, for anyone who may be wondering, the Northeast same, uh, same kind of uh, situation as far as overblown snow totals. Uh, and even WPC and, and NDFD don't go out uh, that far. So let's take a look at our severe weather potential on Tuesday. We're going to go to GFS here, and, and now the site you're looking at is going to be Pivotal Weather. This is a site that gives us a lot of of tools, a lot of parameters, more than Weather Belt does. And you know, I'll say that Weather Belt is great. Pivotal Weather gives us a lot more details. So uh, follow along here. We'll take a look at a couple of the parameters. We'll start with the GFS here. The service-based cape and hodographs. And I'll explain more about hodographs uh, when, when we look at soundings. So service-based cape is if if you watch our videos before you know what this is it's convective convective available potential energy it's basically the instability values at the surface this is useful for depending the amount of energy and instability that is uh, at the surface and one thing to notice here looking here at wednesday evening okay you're gonna notice the photographs are very enlarged and these photographs are basically the wind speed and direction with height so the pink colors are zero to one kilometer, uh, zero to one kilometers in the atmosphere. One to three is red, green is three to six, and uh, yellow is six to nine. So when we see these very large photographs, that is indicating we have a lot of shear that's going to really support uh, potential for tornadoes, even damaging winds and hail. Now, given the type of environment that we have here it's looking like we're going to end up more of a linear type event rather than a super cellular type event a lot of that has to break down with the uh with the kind of warm set that we have we don't have a large warm set there and, and you can see that here there's not a large instability spread a lot of instability is confined close, closer to the gulf if we take a sounding out of southeast louisiana uh you can see that shear is definitely very much in place <clears throat> for uh, potential for damaging winds and tornadoes, like the SPC mentioned. Even the SPC does mention potential for maybe a couple strong tornadoes as well. Even though it's a slight risk, there is a potential for strong tornadoes, so we have to keep an eye out on that. But this is a relatively okay profile for this time of year. For this region, this is an okay profile. Shear is definitely very supportive. Instability is fair. It's adequate for uh, strong and severe storms, especially in a more linear mode. That we're expecting now there could be a couple of prefrontal cells if we do end up with a slightly bigger warm sector i don't expect instability to really work up and in, in, you know, any further north than this i think if anything it's going to move more it's going to expand more east and north so it's going to be more local risk confined to the uh the southern gulf coast states and and, and also the uh, gulf of mexico waters uh and the time you're looking at here i'm looking here from Tuesday afternoon into early Wednesday morning, so this could be a nocturnal type event. Overnight severe storms and tornadoes. So uh, for those who you know have work or school the next day, you don't have to especially you don't have to stay up, but make sure that if you uh, you know go to sleep early that night or, or, or go to sleep in your normal time, whatever, uh, you have a weather radio, you have a plan of action, or if you don't have a weather radio, use your phone. Turn your phone on sound and make sure it's on so that uh, you can hear weather uh, alerts and, um, and make sure that's also turned on on your phone as well. You want to make sure you have a source of getting warnings. And by the way, I want to mention this because we're here in 2023. People should have known this a long time ago. Sirens are not a way to get a weather warning when you're indoors and asleep. They are not a reliable source of weather information when you're indoors. Please, it can save your life. Do not rely on tornado sirens. You have got to have a way that you can make sure that you can hear the warning that will wake you up in the middle of the night. I know it's not fun waking up to a loud alarm at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, but, I'm, but if I was in a situation, I would much rather be awoken at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and rather not be aware that there's a tornado you know, coming my way. I'd much rather be awoken and going to my safe place than rather being unaware and in a harmful spot. So just want to mention that uh, for those who, uh, for those in this area. So yes, there is definitely instability and shear in place, and it's a pretty favorable environment for uh, those hazards, of course, you know, looking at if uh, models like the NAM here, 
Uh, somewhat similar to GFS here. Uh, quite a bit of sheer, you know, fair instability. Uh, so definitely, you know, in place for a uh, severe wind and tornado threat. And you can see here, of course, you know, I, I really don't look at this too often because it's not the most accurate, especially the Gingas resolution. But it, the environment does favor more linear storm mode from this. And uh, I do want to mention too, for those who maybe uh, you know, may not be in the risk, you could also be doing with pressure gradient winds. And a lot of these wind gusts are not associated with storms, by the way. A lot of these wind gusts are not associated with storms. So parts of Alabama, Georgia, even in the Florida Panhandle, even ahead of the storms, you're going to be dealing with some gusty winds overnight. So make sure if you have any outdoor um, outdoor stuff that can be you know, easily uh, tampered with by the wind, you want to either bring them inside or if that's not possible, uh, at least keep them sheltered from the wind. And the wind's going to be predominantly coming in from the south and southeast. Pretty much where the wind's going to be coming, going to be coming from. Uh, Tuesday night and only Wednesday morning. But you can see here a lot of uh, gusty winds here uh, that are not associated with thunderstorms. Of course, yes, yeah, thunderstorms are going to produce winds themselves. But even ahead of that, you could see some uh, strong winds ahead of that. So be mindful of that. Uh, you don't want to be... Uh, caught off guard with those gusty winds. It could also be some isolated power power outages as well with some of the more fragile uh, infrastructure areas. So keep in mind out. Uh, keep in mind that. So let's go ahead and go back here and let's take a look at the future. So we, we discussed our uh, severe threat and let's just take a look at what we can expect in the future here. Of course, we've seen. Uh, what the, you know, we, we've seen a preview of what it could look like towards the end of the month here. Another couple systems, not as potent as this one that we're seeing uh, this week, but there could be another couple systems that may come through with some snow parts the northern United States, the Ohio Valley in the northeast, maybe some rainstorms down here in parts of the southern states. As far as severe weather, it's highly uncertain. It really is highly, highly uncertain. Uh, we, we do continue to see these sort of troughs that uh, I do kind of come through, but it's quite a long wave pattern up to the north here, kind of not really allowing these big uh, troughs, like say this one, for example, to really uh, dig down. Of course, you know, we're 300 hours out, so I don't really trust anything that's past the 10 day period. Plus, it has some major cons consistency from 16 day to 10 days, so just put that out there. But I do want to mention here. This has been sort of on talk on social media and such as far as, you know, could, could we have another Arctic blast to close out the month? There is some ensemble guidance that may suggest a colder pattern ending January and starting February. That's a possibility. GFS ensemble mean does show a pretty large area of lower temperature, uh, lower temperatures, anomalously cold temperatures, uh, basically settling in here for the first week of uh, February, the last week of January, the first week of February. The European here is kind of on the same page here, so we could be ending up with a uh, cooler pattern going into January or going into the month of February. So if you're a cold lover, this is good news. So we'll keep our eyes on it. No guarantees. We'll just uh, watch it uh, as uh, we always do here. So. Uh, of course, we'll keep you guys updated on everything that you've seen in this video and all that. So that's going to close it off for this video. I know it's a little longer video than what's uh, typical here, but we have a big winter storm and a, and a severe weather storm that we have to cover. So that's what was in this video. So thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you guys in the next video.